Hi guys, welcome back to Wilderbeard Reviews and welcome back to What's On Your Pull List, the weekly show where we talk about our favorite day of the week, New Comic Book Day. Thank you guys for joining us today. We have a packed, packed show. We got a ton of comic books to talk about, got some great comments to go through from last week, and we got some X of Swords and some other stuff to talk about. So before we get into all of that, a couple things up front here, just some kind of administrative stuff that I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about so in last week's video I talked about feeling some burnout and things like that and so a lot of you guys in the comments had some very very kind words about that so I just wanted to right up front thank you guys for that we are going to go through all of your comments I probably won't uh, react individually to those about the the burnout stuff from last week but right up front just wanted to say thank you guys for that I'm feeling a lot better this week I've got some vacation coming up as starting this week I'm off work for a week and a half which will impact the channel a little bit i want to talk to you guys about that so first and foremost thank you guys so much for that uh so um yes talking about the review schedule specifically for this week um i am actually off uh work starting on wednesday but i will not be able to post any reviews on wednesday like i normally do i usually try to get up at least two reviews on wednesday so uh what's the reasoning for that well it's a very good reason wednesday is my wedding anniversary and as much as my wife loves me and lets me uh, do what I do here on the channel I think our wedding anniversary is not a day that I can get away with posting reviews so uh, given that um, uh, there won't be anything new coming out on the channel Wednesday but uh, Thursday during the day we'll probably start seeing some videos be posted on the channel I've got Thursday and Friday off this week and all of next week off as well for the Thanksgiving holiday so just be sure to check your subscription feed maybe hit the notification notification bell on the channel so you can get notifications when uh, videos start posting. Uh, one last thing before we jump into the video and go through the featured comics, your comments from last week, and all of the comics that I'm picking up this week, uh, there is one comic that I am not going to pick up this week, and that is Rorschach number 2, the uh, new 12-issue miniseries from Tom King and Jorge Fornes from, or George Fornes from DC Comics. I, I purchased and reviewed issue one and it was just kind of okay and then in that video when I talked about it I said I was probably going to give it three or four issues before I made a determination on it and I got to thinking about it a little bit more after I posted that review and it's a five dollar an issue book so if there's 11 issues left that's a 55 dollar investment that I would still have to make into that series that I'm not sure I enjoyed the first issue of so I'm going to drop that from my pull list and then probably eventually pick up the trade paperback for it um, if the price Pricing stays the same for uh, that trade paperback as it did for Mr. Miracle at a cover price of like $24.99. That is a much uh, easier to swallow investment than an additional $55. So I get to save $30, bucks, put it towards another series that's coming out or some older trade paperbacks that I'm interested in. So I'm not going to be picking up Rorschach and number two uh, or any of the subsequent single issues. Also kind of want to see what the, uh, the, the consensus is on that book going forward. So... Just a couple administrative things to get out of the way before we start the video. Thank you guys for your kind words last week. No reviews starting on Wednesday night this week. Those are pushed to uh, Thursday this week, and then I'll be dropping Rorschach from my pull list. All right, guys, let's get into the video proper. And as always, I want to kick it off with a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters. Nigel, Russell, Frank, Keith, Dominic, Chris, Daniel, Braden, Donovan, David, Will, Robert, Doug, Adam, John, and Joe, thank you guys so much for your continued financial support of the channel. It really helps me do everything that I do here behind the scenes, picking up these comics and bringing you guys my reviews for them. If you're interested in becoming a patron, look down in the description box down below. You'll see the link there, and I would thank you for that. All right, guys, let's get into the featured issue this week. And it's actually going to be featured issues this week, and those are going to be the X of 
Swords book uh, books this week. Uh, like always, or like it has been for the past couple weeks, there are three of them, uh, parts 17, 18, and uh, 19. Um, so first off, we've got uh, X-Force issue uh, 14, which is part 17, uh, Hellions issue 6 as part 18, and then uh, Cable issue 6, which is part 19. Uh, so the reason I made these the featured issues this week is I had some pretty harsh words about um, the couple of the issues that we had last week, specifically Excalibur issue 14, and then um, I can't remember what the other one was. Um, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Wolverine issue 7. Uh, this event has definitely gone in a much different direction than I was expecting and a lot of other people out there were also expecting and I had some like I said pretty harsh harsh words for it especially for Excalibur issue uh, 17 and so one of the main comments that stuck out to me when I was reading through uh, the comments on those videos was that um, uh, someone said that I kind of did this to myself with my expectations and where I figured that this was going and you know that there was always and the, the idea idea of where this was going to go was maybe not just a straightforward tournament and I want to push back on that a little bit because I think where we've been driving to with with X of Swords um, so far has been what I would consider to be a pretty standard tournament that's what um, I, I want to say that there's nothing that I remember reading that would have told us that that, that uh, we shouldn't expect a pretty standard tournament between all of our, our characters. We have people gathering swords to line up on both sides. We saw our venues get outlined over the course of the first half of X of Swords. Um, and then we had uh, Magic teaching Cypher how to sword fight, kind of directly leading us into, um, or kind of telling us that he's going to have to be in a sword fight. That's exactly what we're going to be doing. And um, obviously that is not the case now that we've had a couple issues with the actual duels in them and only a couple of them have been straight sword fights. And actually, you know, calling them straight sword fights is... And yes, the fight itself was a fight with swords, but uh, Opal Luna Saturnine, the um, the the purveyor of this tournament, is definitely paying playing fast and loose with the rules. So it definitely threw me for a loop. Uh, now that I've had a few more days to sit with it, I think I'm a little more okay with it than I was. I think if there had been um, a couple lines from Opal Luna Saturnine that said, "Oh." Did you think this was just going to be a stand and fight kind of tournament? No, we're going to do something weird. If the comic had prepared us for that a little bit, I think I would have been much more on board with it. I saw um, that, that same comment uh, point out that even Apocalypse himself mused that maybe the swords were just a key to entry and not necessarily the tools they would need uh, to fight. And while I agree with that, that there's a uh, one piece of evidence that could lead us to believe that this won't be just a standard stand stand and fight sword tournament between all of our characters uh, pairing off. I don't think that is nearly enough evidence for us to not be thrown for a loop or at least or, uh, you know taken aback by what we ended up getting and there's just there was no introduction to this. There was no transition. It was just we had one standard sword fight between Betsy and Iska and then we went right into like some sort of weird wedding ceremony between um, Cypher and Bay the Blood Moon. So it was just really hard, really weird and I don't know where it come from and it seems like there was no groundwork laid for what this arc has become. Okay, given all of that, now that we know what's going on with it, I'll probably be a little less harsh this week going into these issues, or at least I'm expecting to be. I know that this a lot of people look to this channel and my words and thoughts on comics to be a very positive force in the comics community, and that ended up not being the case last week. So I'm going to... A attempt to and try to view these new issues in as positive a light as possible, but still giving my true-to-form thoughts on there. I'm not going to just sugarcoat it when I don't care for an issue, but we'll see what they are this week. So let's go back over here um, to these issues. So like I said, we've got um, Wolf, or I'm sorry, uh, X-Force issue uh, 14, and this one says, Chivalry gives way to Fury, a knight must kneel. I wonder who that knight is. Probably Captain Avalon? If there's a knight, I would think it might be him. And then Hellions issue 6, Chaos, Deceit, and a Hero Returns. Now, is this... Um, 
uh, Rock Slide maybe here on the cover that that was he was that character uh, that died. Maybe he's coming back a certain way. Also, I'm very curious to see what the Hellions are doing since they were looking to subvert the. Um, the tournament and then lastly is a cable issue six this one says a son the stars a fool and his bravery so hopefully this one is a cable focused issue he is the fool according to the tarot cards that have been there in the um in this story so far so uh, at this point i'm honestly not sure what to expect from any of these books which is on the one hand kind of exciting but on the other hand it's kind of like okay i was being led down one path and then we took a hard left turn so what do we expect going forward so We'll have to wait and see on these. So, well, this these will probably be the first things that I review this week going into uh, this week's batch of reviews, which there's going to be a lot of them. Uh, I actually have 12 issues coming out this week, so I'm gonna, I'm kind of glad I'm on vacation, so I got the time to go through all of these. All right, those are our featured issues of the week. So, with that done, let's go to your comments from last week. Uh, we're going to kick it off with Mary S E A. It says, Beard, if you need to take a break, please do. If you have to cut back, though, please continue to review the Dawn of X comics. You're my favorite X-Men comic review channel. Love your positive energy and enthusiasm for all things. So thank you for your kind words. And uh, I'm not actually dropping anything except for the uh, aforementioned Rorschach, which had, which had some uh, additional complications therein. And actually, there's been some series that are uh, coming to an end, like Teen Titans is coming to an end uh, this week. But no, I would never drop any of the X-Men comics. That's what I absolutely love. Got my X-Men shirt on. You can see the X-Men um, uh, uh, shelf behind me. That whole middle shelf right there is all X-Men stuff. So I'm going to keep reviewing the X-Men stuff. And as far as positivity uh, or a positive energy for the X-Men, well, that kind of depends on what they do with them this week. I'm going to try to be positive, but again, it's going to all depend on what the pages bring. All right. Uh, John Ramirez says, I gave Ultraman the kick. It just wasn't going anywhere for me. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm not terribly familiar with Ultraman, so I'm sorry he didn't scratch that itch for you. Hopefully something else out there uh, can. There's definitely a, a ton of comics that you can uh, pick up instead. Uh, Danda, uh, Dand Isu, uh, Dandasu, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, uh, says, definitely the Battle of X of Swords. So, yes, we did get into the actual uh, X of Swords battles last week, but they were not as, uh, they weren't what we expected, which we've already covered a bunch. Not going to go into any more details here, but yeah, the battle started, but it wasn't really a battle-ish, kind of. I don't know. I'm just <laughs> still not quite sure what to think about all of this. All right, uh, Luna Moody says, Hey, Wildebeard, sorry you're feeling burnt out these days, though with what's going on uh, these days, I'm betting most of the world is right there with you on that front. Hope it gets better for you. Thank you very much, Luna. This week's comics are Marauders uh, 15, Excalibur 14, and Wolverine 7. Take care of you. You take care of you also, Luna Moody. Looks like you're, uh, your comics uh, list have de definitely dropped drastically dropped now that you dropped um, all of the DC books uh, as you mentioned a week or two ago when we talked about that so hopefully you're finding some stuff outside of Marauders uh, I'm sorry out of Marvel stuff to read there's definitely some some good stuff out there all right next up we got Ozzy Shepard saying I'm picking up Excalibur 14 Marauders 15 and Wolverine 7 also a punchline and detective comics yeah man take a hiatus well yeah I'm definitely feeling better from uh, last week and I've got a vacation coming up like we've talked about so Definitely uh, going to be on the rebound. And man, lots of people picking up those X of Swords books. Um, I still got some comments to read through from those. So hopefully... All right, next up, Chaos Finale is says, uh, I decided to dump X of Swords altogether as well as any other X titles I was subscribed to. They weren't just they weren't interesting to me anymore. It feels just like another fresh coat of paint for an X-Men event. Though the same could be said for all comics. Anyways, polls are below. I also dropped Department of Truth. That's probably Tinian's worst uh, work I have read from him. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 52 and Amazing Spider-Man 52 LR. Dark Knight's Death Metal Infinite Extreme. Last uh, tie-in was amazing. Uh, Detective Comics 1030. Marvel Zombies Resurrection 4. Power Rangers 1. Mighty Morphin 1 was amazing and Power Rangers 1 was also pretty damn good. I haven't filmed my review for that one yet, but it was pretty awesome as well. Punchline Special 1. Seven Secrets 4. Uh, Star Wars Darth Vader 7. 
Strange Academy 5, and we only find them when they're dead. 3, the mystery of this story is very interesting. And Wonder Woman 766. I hear you on the burnout, man. I'm actually going to sell off some of my collection in bundles to make up for how much money I dropped on comics in the last three months. It seems I haven't had a week that wasn't under $60. Yeah, the comics have been coming fast and hard. Holy crap. Feels like, uh, like last week I had six issues, which was fantastic. Kind of a, sl a lighter week. This week we're right back up to 12. So good lord. I was hoping the following week, November 25th, was going to be a little bit lighter because it's the weekend before, or the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. But looking ahead, I think I've got like seven, maybe eight that week as well. Good lord. The hits coming and they don't stop coming. Alright, Smirking Gun Reviews says, Hope things start to calm down. Down for you. Burning out is so hard to deal with. Believe you me. This week I have Amazing Spider-Man 5552LR. Had to pick up the uh, Marco uh, Cacetto ver uh, variant. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that last name right. Probably if, uh, are not. Uh, Excalibur 14, Marauders 15, Marvel Zombies Resurrection 4, Wolverine 7, Dark Knights, Death Metal, Infinite Extreme, Number 1, De Detective Comics 1030, Oblivion Song 28. We only find them when they're dead. 3, Keep on keeping on, and hopefully we'll see you in December for the November Comics You Love show. The second huge episode is on my channel. If you want to see three guys who love talking comics, go on for a while. So yeah, definitely guys, head over to a Smirking Gun Reviews and check that out. It's a show that I hope to be on in December where we talk about our favorite issues from the previous month. So that would be November's books. Uh, hopefully I can make that work this month and you guys can check me out over there. Alright, next up, Hawkeye TS says, I somehow completely missed last week's video. Uh, I think YouTube's bell notifications are messing up now as well, but luckily I saw this one in the subscription list. Also, as others have said, definitely take a break and or cut review quantities back if you're feeling burned out because if you start not enjoying it, what's the point of doing it? Better take a breather before that happens 100%. That's kind of what I tried to do for myself. Take a couple days off here and there, put the phone down, step away from the comment section and all of that. So thank you guys again, like I said at the front, for all of your uh, kind words. All right, a fairly large list this week. Amazing Spider-Man 52 and 52 LR. Champions number two, Dark Knights, Death Metal, Infinite Hours, Extreme number one. Getting It Together number two, The Magnificent Mrs. Marvel 16, Power Rangers 1, Savage Avengers 14, Seven Secrets 4, Strange Academy 5, We Only Find Them When They're Dead number three, and then of course all three of last week's X of Swords books. Also wanted to note uh, for anyone collecting Power Rangers that the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Beyond the Grid hardcover collection should be coming out this week. I know where there's some complaints about this particular section of the Mighty Morphin run, and it reads like it was forced to end a little early, but the first printings of these hardcovers tend to uh, sell pretty quickly, and boom, usually takes a while to restock their collections. So I just wanted to give everyone a heads up to anyone who may have been waiting. I'm very curious to see how they're going to handle the collections going forward as the Necessary Evil uh, arc was split between Go Go Power Rangers containing the origin of Omega Rangers and Mighty Morphin containing the main arc. So far none of the Go Go Power Rangers has been collected in hardcover except for the few Shattered Grid issues that were included in the Shattered Grid collection. Personally I'm hoping they'll do multiple collections this year and I get caught up on everything but I guess we will find out so fantastic information there from you Hawkeye if you definitely uh, definitely if you're collecting those hardcovers make sure you get one because if it uh, is like he says and boom takes a while to restock those don't want you to hang out and have that empty slot on your shelf for too long and I for one enjoyed the beyond the grid storyline I do also feel like you said um, it was forced to end a little bit early I really enjoyed the solar rangers and the rangers from that galaxy hope we can get a little bit more information on those I dug those and I think we left them off a little too soon. I think that story could have breathed a little bit more. All right, next up we got Noble AH says, "Hey, Will the Beard, great video. So the Power Rangers graphic novel is good if you're a super fan of Time Force, but it is skippable. Nothing ground uh, breaking. And also uh, you got Harper's name right. It is Bluebird. Good. <laughs> Harper Row, one of the Batman characters. I'm glad I got that character name right. Uh, also, all uh, right. Now the books I'm getting, I got five books: Power Rangers One, Champions Two, Strange Academy Five. 
5, Taskmaster number 1, and Rai 19. I think I saw an excerpt from Taskmaster on Reddit or Instagram, and that looked like a pretty good book. Hopefully that one was good. I'm really sad we're not going to get Black Widow uh, this year. I think this is the first year in like 11 or 12 years where we haven't had any any new MCU content outside of like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but I'm not sure if that really counts at this point anymore. We, they just announced uh, la earlier this week, or I'm sorry, this previous week, that WandaVision wasn't going to come out until January. So yeah, 2020 was a, a dry year for MCU content, as if it wasn't a bad enough year already. All right, next up is uh, Ultimate Victory 88, Detective Comics 1030. I'm really loving Tomasi's old school. School, uh, uh, run feel just good old plain Batman stories on the detective level no city burning down no life threatening issues no over complicating storylines just some good old story and yeah 1030 was a fantastic issue as well punchline special and number one merp I don't know I do have faith in this character I just hope they don't go in the woke road with this character uh, Dark Knights Death Metal Infinite Hours Extreme oh Jesus this whole event has been so weird and not in a good or or fun way in a way that shows how much I love Snyder and that I will read anything he releases. Yeah, I, I feel you on that one. I'm definitely planning on reading those tie-ins once they hit DC Universe, but man, there's just way too many of them at five bucks a whack to, to chase them all down. We only find them uh, when they're dead. Number three, I'm still 50-50 on this story. Art is great, so I'll give it a go. Uh, I do enjoy the finding gods when they're dead in Space 5 to sell pieces of their body on the black market, but kind of boring, though. I think that's the first I've heard of what this story is actually about, and that sounds insane. I may have to flip through issue one when I go to the comic shop this week just to see. All right, and then P.S. Still waiting on your review for the plot. What's the plot? I've never heard of the plot. I've never heard... Of that book that's sitting on my shelf over there. Never heard of it. <laughs> Love the channel and burnout is normal. Your reviews are always so in-depth and you treat your reviews as something special every time one goes up. Hope you keep the channel going forever and ever and ever. Ha, yes, we are definitely not going anywhere. And like I've said, I have vacation coming up, so maybe I can get to that review for the plot soon? Maybe? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Alright guys, those are all your comments from last week, so be sure to jump down in the comments section on this video to let me know what comics you're getting this week. Alright, for as for the rest of the comics that I'm getting this week, and there are a lot, we're going to kick it off with Juggernaut Issue 3. Juggernaut on trial. There's no secret Juggernaut has been on the wrong side of the law in the past, but can even justice stop him, or will he tear down the system? Now, if you're not reading Juggernaut, it's been a fantastic read thus far. It's been really deep diving into the character of who Juggernaut is, uh, having him kind of be self-reflective about his past, trying to turn over a new leaf. It's a really great, almost character... Um, uh, focused, it's definitely character driven, but almost like a character dissection of who a juggernaut is. It's been an absolutely fantastic read. All right, next up is Something is Killing the Children, issue 12. This series has been phenomenal. Issue 11 was pretty close to a perfect issue of this book. Uh, time is running out for Erica to save Archer's Peak, uh, both from its monster infestation and from the occupation of the Order of St. George. Will Erica be forced to finally stop being a lone wolf? and accept help from unlikely allies. This has been just an amazing book. Um, if you're not reading it, I can highly, highly recommend it. Please pick up Volume 1 uh, of this, and hey, we're probably getting close to Volume 2 being out. It's an amazing uh, kind of creature horror book, and then there's some secret society stuff in there. It's absolutely fantastic. I love it. All right, next up from Boom Studios is Once and Future. Beowulf's arrival in was an unexpected one, and now that the smoke has cleared great Grant and Duncan are beginning to wonder what other surprises lurk around the corner. Meanwhile, in Otherworld, Merlin is up to his old tricks and crossing over with another story was just the beginning of his plan. So yes, things continue to go off the rails in Once and Future. This is another amazing book from Boom Studios. Um, if you like um, kind of old world mythological stuff like Knights of the Round Table, Beowulf and Grendel, this is a fantastic book. This should be the start of the third story arc for this one so basically 
one of the main tenets of this book is if you um, uh, if you basically represent what um, a mythological creature or person would be like if you represent um, uh, one of the knights of the round table then you kind of become that person within the story and the story comes to life very very interesting stuff all right next up is a batman number 103 getting into the dc comics stuff this weekend there's a lot of dc comic stuff all right batman and ghostmaker go toe to toe to decide which of them will remain a gotham city's hero the city is changing fast Faster than ever in the aftermath of the Joker War, and with this change comes increasing dangers as Gotham City's uh, Gotham's citizens demand that Punchline be released from prison. Very interesting. Plus, Harley Quinn faces certain death at the hands of a clown hunter. So, yes, this new um, <clears throat> character of Ghostmaker was introduced in last issue. I think he appeared before that, but we really got a solid introduction to him in at issue 102. He has some history with Bruce Wayne. We saw him when Bruce was running around the globe trying to get trained up so he could become Batman, and these two have a deep, dark history together that I cannot wait to see unravel as Tinian continues on to Batman for a for the foreseeable future. All right, next up is Catwoman issue 27. Catwoman's going to uh, be the top cat in Alleytown, and first, uh, the first gang she's going to make an example of is the Cotton Bob by stealing a truck full of contraband from right under their nose. Catwoman, the Alleytown kids, the police, and the Cotton Bob all converge in a high-speed heist. What do you get when you mix a cat, three kids, and one truck full of contraband speeding through the streets of Alleytown? One hell of a truck robbery. That's what. Now, this sounds like a perfect Catwoman comic to me. You've got um, mobster stuff, you've got her trying to steal stuff, and it all goes wrong. She's trying to steal stuff and do um, the wrong thing for the right reasons is typically how I like to see my Catwoman, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped for this new direction of Catwoman. Next up... Dark Knight's Death Metal 5, which at this point I'm just kind of buying because I want to complete the seven-issue story arc. Um, I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to review this one or not. <clears throat> They seem to rely so heavily on having read those tie-ins, which I'm not reading, that it makes just this mainline miniseries just not that enjoyable, and it seems really disjointed and disconnected. Again, if you're not reading those tie-ins, which this leans on, which is just a terrible, in my opinion, way of running an event uh, from from DC Comics. So if uh, if and when, or sorry, when I read this one this week, if I have something constructive to say about it um then i'll post a video for it but if uh, but don't be surprised if there's not a review for this one and i may post something on the community tab of the channel if i'm not going to review it uh next up uh justice league uh 57 this is the only dark knight's death metal tie-in that i'm reading mostly because i was already reading justice league at the beginning and this has actually been pretty good uh doom metal part five of five the legion of doom has been freed and now they're turning on their saviors the justice league team Teeth will gnash, knuckles will be bared, and Lex Luthor will make a decision that shocks everyone, including Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. The ending of this epic story leads directly into Dark Knight's Death Metal number 5. So there you go. I guess I'll read this one before I read Dark Knight's Death Metal this week. Alright, next up is Nightwing issue 76. One bullet robbed Nightwing of his memories and identity. One bullet erased Dick Grayson and replaced him with Rick Grayson. Now we with Dick's true identity returned, KG Beast is back with one last bullet for him. Using B as bait, KG Beast has made it abundantly clear that this one last bullet isn't intended for Nightwing's head. This one is aiming to puncture his broken heart. So, one of the best things to come out of the Rick Grayson era of Nightwing was B. I actually really like that character. I think these two actually work together pretty well as a cup as a uh, as a couple. I prefer Dick with Bar with Barbara Gordon, but she's got some else going on right now so it's fine but they can each have their own independent um romantic interest that's fine and like i said i really like b hopefully she doesn't die because that would just be like just ripping your heart out for this character so we'll see what comes of this issue and then lastly this week is teen titans 27 the last issue of teen titans as this issue this series comes to a close 
Robin betrayed them, Superboy abandoned them, and now the only Teen Titans left are Crush, Kid Flash, Red Arrow, and Roundhouse. As the Teen Heroes wrap up what may be their final mission, they're going to get some unexpected encouragement from a group that knows a little how about how hard it is to be heroes. Special guest stars, the original Titans, prove there may still be some good this team can do in the future. So, I have really enjoyed the Teen Titans. I don't think I have, I didn't start reading it as soon as it was published, but I jumped onto it pretty quickly. Um, I really enjoy this team. I enjoy Red Arrow and Kid Flash and even Crush and Roundhouse have grown on me since we've been reading them. So sorry to see this series come to an end. Hopefully some of these characters or maybe even all of them can find homes in other series going on. And this is not the last we're going to see of them. I definitely doubt it's the last we're going to see of Kid Flash and Red Arrow. Maybe a while before we see Crush and Roundhouse. But again, hopefully they find homes and we see them again at some point in DC comics all right guys that is everything on my poll list this week again what do you have on your poll list this week let me know down in the comments down below and i'll read through those when i do next week's what's on your poll list video guys thank you so much for watching if it's your first time here at the channel do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button it would absolutely mean a lot to me uh, also if you want to become a patron and that link is down in the description box down below also i have an ask me anything tip page if you want to leave a uh, suggestion for a channel uh, or a suggestion for a video for the channel I will definitely get to do that one for you guys once again thank you so much for watching and until next time we'll see you at the comic shop